Hi Metals One, in this video I'm just going to be showing you how to finish your rings. It should be fairly straightforward, you're just going to be doing some filing and sanding. So this is my sample ring that I cast. So one thing I'm going to be doing is, you can see I've got that little bit of my sprue left over there, so I'm going to file that flush. Um, something else I'm going to do is, you can see that my edges here are sort of pointed because it curves in. When this was in wax, it was pretty comfortable to wear, but now that I'm holding it, these edges are really sharp. So I'm going to file a slight bevel on there to sort of curve it um, so it doesn't stab me when I'm wearing it. So that'll be good. Um, you can also, I'm not really going to be doing much carving on this. I'm really just going to be filing and sanding um, to finish this and shine it up. But something that's optional that you can do, you can use any of your files to really carve into your metal. So I know there were a lot of people who had kind of like rigid, straight, kind of like 90 degree edges. That's totally fine if you want your ring to look like that. Um, you don't have to file a bevel or carve into it. But if you do want to maybe add a little more dimension or some curved surfaces, you can just use your file to sort of round off those corners or maybe even file some bevels to create sort of a feeling of depth. Like I said, it's totally optional, but you do want to make sure that you're filing out any sort of um, inconsistencies or textures. Now something you may run into with cast, um, cast objects, and this happens all the time, um, is you might find that you're starting to get some pitting. And that's just because cast objects tend to be a lot more porous than sheet metal or wire. Um, so you may find some little pits that can happen just from inconsistencies in the casting process. There are a lot of different reasons why your metal might pit a little bit. Um, like I said, it's just something that happens. So if you run into it, you can try to file and sand out that pit. And sometimes it comes out, sometimes though, sort of a deeper pit will be revealed. So it's really up to you how you wanna handle those pits. If you have access to soldering equipment, I know some of you have studio setups at home, something you can do when you get pits is you can just fill it with solder and then sand any excess solder away. And then also, again, if you have a studio access or studio equipment um, at your house, um, if you have a really large pit, sometimes I'll drill a slight hole deeper into the pit and then fill it with silver wire or any kind of wire um, and then solder that wire in place. So that way you have a little inlay, but also it's a little bit easier if you've got a bigger pit to deal with than just trying to fill it in with solder. So I'm just gonna file and sand this in your um, envelopes that I just sent out the other day with your rings. I also packed some 220, 320, and 400 grit sandpaper. So if you're out of sandpaper, you can use that to sand your ring. And I'll also post a link. This is totally optional, but in case you want to polish your rings in the future, I'll be posting a link to show you where you can buy some polishing paper. Um, I'm not requiring you to do this for this project, but you know, if maybe in the future polishing it up to like a higher grit finish is what you want, um, you can find that resource um, in the link in the description. Okay, so I'm just gonna start filing away at this. Now that I filed the edges and I filed that bevel on here so this isn't quite as sharp, I'm also going to file the inside of the ring using the round side of my half round file. Um, so this ring, it fits pretty well. Occasionally you get just a little bit of shrinkage in casting. Um, so if you feel like your ring's a little too tight, you can always just file it a bit. Um, I would try not to file it too much because after that you're gonna sand it, which is going to remove some more material. Um, so try not to go overboard with filing the inside so you don't make your ring too big, but do make sure you pay attention to the inside to file out any sort of inconsistencies, or like I said, if you need to make it a little bit bigger through filing, just go ahead and do that.
Now that ring's fitting a lot better. Um, it was just a little tight before, but now feels nice and comfortable. Um, like I said, I've got those sharp edges away. Something I forgot to mention at the beginning, so also when I was filing, I wasn't just filing the inside to make it larger, but also to make sure I get rid of all that texture that was in my ring. Um, you may notice that the textures in your ring um, sort of look like almost fingerprints, and that's from 3D printing. So that's all the individual layers stacked on top of each other. Um, so now the only thing that I'm going to do is sand this. And like I said, you can just use your sandpaper, you know, you can just um, sort of wrap it around the inside and sand like that. If you've got a dowel at home, you could wrap sandpaper around there and then sand the inside um, or just do it by hand. But I'm gonna be taking this up to a 600 grit finish. Um, you all can just go up to 400 um, because that's what I sent you. Um, Something I am gonna do because I have this texture in here, you can see that I didn't really file or sand that because that texture is really subtle and I don't wanna file that out, right? Um, so I think I might just hit it up very lightly with sandpaper because I think it would look nice if these ridges had kind of a slight um, sanded or uh, polished finish, but then these little divots in the texture were still that pickle white. I think that would be a really nice contrast. So that's something you can also consider for those of you who have a lot of kind of like textured surfaces in your piece. All right, now I've got this all sanded up. I didn't sand the texture like I said, um, but this is sanded up to 600. You all can just take your rings up to 400 unless you have some 600 sandpaper left over still, um, but just use what I sent you. Um, so I'm happy with the way that this is looking. I did find as I was sanding, and I'm not sure if they're gonna show up on the camera at all, cause they are kind of small, but right in here on the inside of my ring band, and then this might be a little more visible right there. I do have a slight pit, um, so, I didn't want to keep sanding it because it was sort of revealed as I was sanding away. So it was probably underneath the surface. So I don't want to risk this potentially getting bigger. Um, sometimes pits, you can file and sand them out easily, but sometimes there's like, a, as you continue to sand them, you'll find that there's a larger pit underneath. So I'm just going to leave them as is. Maybe sometime I'll fill them in with some solder. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to just demonstrate, and this is not something you have to do at all, but I was just gonna grab some polishing papers just to show you what they look like. And I was just gonna lightly polish my ring a little bit with them. These are the polishing papers. They're really thin. They feel almost like cloth. They're not as abrasive as sandpaper. Um, so if you order the pack that I'm putting in the description, which again, that's totally optional. I do not expect you to do that or um, polish your ring up for critique, but I just wanted to take this opportunity, even though you don't have these materials, to just show you like kind of a um, traditional or typical way of polishing. Um, rings without using a buffing machine. Um, so it comes in different grades. So this goes green, gray, blue, uh, pink, the sort of mint color, and then I think they call this light green at the end. It looks almost white. So you just take it and you can probably see that I've used all of this before. Um, so it lasts a long time and I don't usually throw it away as I'm using it. So oops, sorry, let me get that in there. So I'll literally just go around my ring like this, kind of like it's sandpaper. And this will give you kind of a nice, really kind of subtle polish. It's almost like a step up from 600, this green. But if you take it all the way to this final light green right here, um, then that will give you 
like a mirror finish. And you can probably imagine it takes a little while to get there, but it definitely looks really nice. So I'll just polish this up a little bit and show you what that looks like afterwards. Here's my ring, all nice and polished. So I went through all of those grits of the polishing paper um, from the green to that kind of very like white looking um, light green. I'm really liking the way that these ridges, how they're polished and it contrasts against the white texture there. And you can also still, if you're close up, you can see the sort of like fingerprint texture like I was talking about from the wax being built. So you can see that really does the trick. It doesn't take too long either um, to polish up. But again, you don't have to polish your ring at all. You can just take it to 400 and that's fine. Um, even though we're you know, doing this online and you don't have access to these materials, I still just wanted to show this to you just so you have an idea of what uh, polishing papers can do. And then one last thing to note, your rings probably look fine right now, but sterling silver does oxidize and tarnish over time. Um, that's not a big deal. It'll start to look maybe kind of yellowish, um, but you can really get any sort of jewelry cleaner um, from the store just to clean that up. All right, so I'm really excited to see your rings next week and how you finish them, and I'm really looking forward to it.